guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now over the last couple of months, we've been looking at a lot of small cap companies in the MJ space, predominantly here in Canada. Now I wanted to switch gears a little bit this week and actually start looking at some of the large caps based out of the states. Obviously with the pending US legalization, there's a lot of upside potential. And these companies, because they're bigger in scale, offer a lot more stability than some of the small caps we've been reviewing. So this week we're gonna be looking at Cresco Labs. This is actually one of the biggest producers in the States. They've got a lot of different operations, everything from growing to wholesale production to retail. And we're gonna be really taking a look at their business model. They currently trade over $3 billion market cap. So they are definitely on the larger end of things, but I think it offers some good diversity if you are looking for exposure into this sector. Now before we get into the video, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments section below if there's any other companies in the MJ space based out of the US that you want me to look at in future videos here. Now without further ado, let's jump right in and talk about Cresco Labs. That's right you guys, so today we're going to be talking about Cresco Labs Inc. This is a large cap MJ company operating primarily in the United States. You can see here it closed today at about 1663 and in terms of market cap you're looking north of 3.6 billion dollars Canadian. So it does trade on both the Canadian exchange under the ticker symbol CL and also on the OTC exchange in the United States under ticker symbol CRLBF. So on the US side of things, they're looking at about a $2.9 billion market cap. Now if we pull up a six month chart here, you can see they have had a pretty tremendous run. And if you look over the last year, this company was actually trading in the $2.250 range in March of 2020. So the company has been on a massive run, not to say that it's overvalued at this point, but it definitely has seen its share price appreciate dramatically over the last 12 months. So what initially got me interested in this stock was actually this article here. So I read The Motley Fool quite often. I like their articles. Sometimes they're a little bit contradictory, but I do think it's a good place to find some general investment guidance and to at least add some stocks to your watch list. So I was going through there looking at some different MJ stocks and they were actually talking about three MJ stocks that they feel are really poised for big growth in 2021. And the first one on the list here is lo and behold, Cresco Labs. So this article really talks about their Q3 results. They also talk about their share price appreciation over the last 12 months. So up 350% last 12 months at the time of this article being written and up 33% in calendar 2021 alone. Now Q3 came in with 323% year over year revenue growth and 63% sequential quarter over quarter growth. So they came in at $153 million US for just the three months in Q3. Now we're going to talk about their earning announcement and their Q4 release coming up. But this really did catch my eye because we've been talking about so many of these small caps over the last couple of months where the revenues are in maybe the millions or tens of millions. When I started looking at this and annualizing this out at close to $600 million US, it was really impressive and I wanted to take a closer look at their business model. The other thing that stood out in this article was the Bluma Wellness acquisition. So they actually purchased this company for $213 million US in an all stock transaction and this really allows Cresco to put their foot in the door in terms of medical MJ in the Florida market. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on this acquisition in this video but it's definitely worth looking at in more detail if you're considering getting involved with Cresco yourself. So in terms of what the company actually does I'll read you the corporate overview here quickly and then we'll get into their investor deck and look at some of the highlights that they've called out themselves. So Cresco Labs is one of the largest vertically integrated multi-state MJ operators in the United States. States. So this one has full US exposure as compared to a lot of the Canadian MJ stocks that we've been looking at over the last couple of months and that's what really grabbed my attention here is the extreme amount of exposure this company has to US federal legalization. Cresco is built to become the most important company in the MJ industry by combining strategic geographic footprint with one of the leading distribution platforms in North America. Employing a consumer packaged goods so CPG approach to MJ, Cresco's house of 
brands is designed to meet the needs of all consumer segments and includes some of the most recognized and trusted national brands, including Cresco, Remedy, Mindy's, which is a line of edibles, and then Sunnyside, which is actually their retail brand. Now, if you continue to scroll down on this page, you can start to see the scale of this company compared to some of these small caps that we've been looking at in Canada here. So they are operational in nine U.S. states. They have 15 production facilities compared to most of the companies we've been examining have one or maybe two. They've got 29 retail licenses in multiple different states, and they've got 24 different dispensaries that are up and operational at the time of filming. So obviously they're very diversified, they're very well spread out, and they cover the majority of the U.S. population in the markets where this product is legal, whether that be medical, recreational, or for adult use. So I'm not going to talk about each of their brands in a lot of detail because there is a number of them, but I did want to give a high level overview of kind of their portfolio in terms of the approach to market here. So these are the different brands that they offer. Cresco is elevating everyday MJ. So this is kind of their standard off the shelf line. It's their most popular and consistent strains. They've then got their reserve offering, which is kind of their top shelf proprietary genetics. And they actually only include the top 10% of the flower which is trimmed by hand. So this is kind of their premium offering. They then have Remedy, which is for the wellness-minded MJ users. And this has very specific dosing and easy to consume forms. So tinctures, capsules, and RSO, which are sold directly through dispensaries. They then have their edibles line. So this is branded under Mindy's Edible. It's actually created by James Beard, who's an award-winning pastry chef, and Mindy Seagal, who's coined the mistress of deliciousness. So these are edible products that are infused with MJ oil and these cover things like gummies, chocolates, a lot of what we saw in the previous video with Indiva. So they then have High Supply, which is a bulk MJ offering. This is expertly grown, it's lab tested, so it's very consistent again, and it's actually available in vapes, cartridges, flour, popcorn, shake, and pre-rolls. They then have Wonder Wellness Co., which focuses on low dose, kind of entry level or approachable MJ. And then finally, they have Florical. This is based in Sonoma County, and this is actually their top tier premium MJ flower. It's hand cultivated, it's grown in small batches, and they use sustainable farming techniques with 100% renewable energy. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. Now next up, I wanted to take a second and talk about their wholesale distribution network. Now this company really focuses on wholesale. We're gonna talk about why they've drawn so much attention here later in the video, but I wanted to point out a few numbers here. So they currently have over 350 products, so a massive product offering, 5,000 different SKUs, and they're currently sold in over 700 dispensaries across the country. So they really do have that depth in terms of product lineup and geographic availability. And you can see here the company calls out that they prioritize wholesale in order to reach as many customers as possible by accessing the scaled benefits of a national footprint and national distribution. Now building on that, because they have such a national footprint and because they're so experienced in rolling out in different markets, they actually have an unparalleled speed to market. And this was demonstrated in Pennsylvania where they were actually the first cultivator that was approved and they were the first company to get products to market, which in turn resulted in the first dispensary sales in that state. Ohio was a very similar story. Cresco was the first company to have a dispensary approved and made the first sale of medical MJ in the state. So they really have their system down and it's really now a turnkey process for this company. So they've had a lot of experience in some of these very regulated states like Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Cresco now has the ability to repeat this process and roll out at a fast pace as new markets or new states continue to come online. And that was really exciting for me. It seems like every week or every month, a new state is legalizing MJ in some capacity. So it's really gonna be those first movers that can take advantage of these budding markets, no pun intended. Now we talked briefly about their Sunnyside brand. So this is what their retail stores look like. Very bright, modern, almost looks like an Apple-esque type store. And this is where they actually set up these dispensaries to serve the public 
in a direct to consumer transaction type of approach. They're also really big on education and building trust to really try and invite new people to try out MJ for the first time. So now that we've talked about what the company does and who they are, I wanted to give a quick high level fact sheet here. So you can see they were founded in 2013. They're about seven to eight years old. So still fairly new company, but fairly senior for this type of industry. They've got over 2000 employees. They operate in nine states, which we talked about over 604,000 total square feet of cultivation space. So if you think back to a company like Green Tech or some of the others that we've looked at, the scale that this company is working with is just unparalleled. 19 retail locations with 29 retail licenses, over 830 dispensaries with products on their shelves. And this is growing by the day, literally. They expect about 60% of the US population to consume MJ of some type or some form. So that puts it at about 161 million people in terms of addressable market. Q3 revenues we saw come in just north of 150 million. Their quarter over quarter growth, 63%, which is phenomenal to see, especially when you're talking this size of numbers. Operational gross profit margin was over 53%. So again, extremely strong margins. And we're gonna talk about that as it relates to the bulk or wholesale focus of this company. Company. And then finally EBITDA came in just under $50 million for Q3 alone. So huge numbers here and this company is definitely starting to make significant traction in this space. Now this slide I thought was interesting. This company has a lot of different brands and rightfully so for a company of its size. But this chart really maps out kind of where each one of their brands focuses on in terms of the customer base or product spectrum. So you can see on the left here the scale is based on price point so best, better, good good. And then at the bottom is actually the consumer needs. So whether the customer is looking for healing in terms of alternatives to the regular prescriptions, wellness, so overall kind of holistic well-being, or play, which is defined as kind of recreational MJ use. And you can see a lot of their brands really do focus on this best kind of play experience with Wonder, Florical, and Cresco Reserve really landing in that quadrant. The Cresco brand itself really aims at the middle of the market here. And then you've got the Remedy and the High Supply brands that are kind of flankers in their respective divisions. So we mentioned briefly a few slides ago that this company is really focused on wholesale capacity and wholesale business interaction. So although they have the Sunnyside brand and they do offer a retail experience, Cresco really feels like wholesale is where the money is going to be in this industry long term. So you can see here they've actually started to add additional capacity in Illinois. So you can see here they're looking to take this facility up to 630,000 square feet feet. It's currently operating at 215 as of Q3 and then they've got an additional 88,000 square feet in Pennsylvania. So again this company is really going for scale and if they are able to get this up to full capacity that would make them the largest producer or largest operator of any company in Illinois. And in terms of why the company is really looking to get into this wholesale field, when you start looking at margins, this is really where the money is. So compared to some of these other big operators where they're really focused on the retail experience, they've maybe got a little bit of wholesale, 14, 29, 25%. Cresco Labs has about 60% of their Q3 revenue coming from wholesale operation. So you can see they're really trying to shift their business towards that area. And they then compare this EBITDA margin by very various consumer verticals. So you can see here the tobacco industry has about 40% whereas beverage comes in at about 30, apparel at 14. So they're really positioning themselves in the tobacco kind of mindset and getting involved in the wholesale operation rather than the retailer that's actually selling the cigarettes at the corner store or whatever the case is. Now the other point I wanted to talk about here is the California market. So Cresco really feels like this is where the battle is going to be won. California is currently the largest MJ market in the entire world. California retail sales increased 21% in Q3 alone, while Cresco Labs revenue in California increased by 56% in Q3. So you can see they're really focusing on this state and their focus is paying off as they're outpacing the average retail sales growth by about two and a half times in terms of internal revenue growth. Now, despite these huge growth numbers, they feel like California is still in its infancy and they expect this market to reach about seven billion dollars by 2025. So again their strategy here is to increase wholesale penetration which was up 15% in Q3. They want to add new partner brands to their 
distribution portfolio. And the other metric they call out is the average growth per wholesale account, which was up 25% in Q3. So they want to become the go-to provider for all the different retailers and distributors in this market. Now, if you look on the left here, you can see the state map. They've got a FloorCal Cultivation Center in Northern California, Cresco Labs Cultivation Center in kind of Southern California, a Continuum Fulfillment Center, a Cresco Labs Processing Center, and a Continuum Fulfillment Center up north as well. So they really cover the state in terms of geography and the different types of operation, everything from cultivation, processing, right through to fulfillment. They then talk about some of the other states that they're really excited about. So of the nine states or markets that they participate in, six Six of them are on pace to have over a billion dollars in terms of annualized run rate. So some of the ones they're talking about here are New York where they converted all of their dispensaries to Sunnyside retail brands. They then talk about Arizona where adult use was just passed. They've actually got a 30,000 square foot cultivation facility and a Sunnyside retail center and so on and so forth. Now to wrap things up here you guys I wanted to talk about the financial highlights in a little bit more detail and give my projection in terms of where I think this company should be trading and where the share price could be over the next couple of years. So if you look at their consolidated revenue over the past seven quarters, spanning from Q1 of F19 all the way to Q3 of 2020, you can see the growth rate has gone exponential. They were growing at approximately five to $10 million a year here for the first couple of quarters. They then jumped up 50% between Q4 and Q1. Q2 was up about 50% again. And between Q2 and Q3, they are now up 63% in terms of revenue. And you can see on the left here, on the EBITDA side of things, these quarters were really when the company was laying the groundwork and preparing to scale. And it's only just in the last six months or so that they've really hit the gas and started to accelerate at full production capacity. Now Q4 results are expected to be out March 25th so next week and that's why I was so excited to get this video out now. I really have high expectations for Q4. I think we're going to see tremendous growth rates similar to what we saw in Q3 and in terms of annualized revenue even if you were to take what they did in Q3 and extrapolate that out over a full 12 month period you'd be looking at over 600 million dollars in top line revenue. Now if you take that 600 million dollar US revenue number and you compare it to their market cap which we saw was about 3.6 billion Canadian or about 2.9 billion US you can see they're trading at about five times sales so compared to a company like a tilt or a valence that are trading at maybe one to two times revenue they do look a little bit more expensive however you got to keep in mind that companies of this size number one are a lot more stable there's a lot less risk of them going under or out of business overall and they also have the ability to really scale at a much faster rate now the other thing that I really like about Cresco is is it's 100% exposed to the United States. I feel like that's really where the growth in this industry is going to be over the next five to 10 years. They've got a lot bigger population than Canada. And I think the money that's going to be flowing into this industry is going to be exponential from some of the big institutional investors and banks once that federal green light is given. Now, that being said, if they're able to manage that same 63% growth rate for the duration of 2021, that would mean they're up to about a billion dollars US in terms terms of top line revenue in 2021. So if they're able to command that same multiple of about five times revenue in terms of market cap, that would put them at about a $5 billion market cap towards the end of 2021. Or said another way, about a 60% upside from where they trade today in the next six to 12 months. So to wrap things up, you guys, I definitely think this is a cool opportunity. I really like the scale and the diversification that Cresco Labs offers. I do feel like it's a little bit more expensive than some of the small caps. And to be honest, that's why I have a lot of my personal money in these small or micro cap MJ companies. However, it is nice to have some balance in your portfolio and a real blend or mix of small, medium and large cap companies. Of all the large caps that I've heard about recently, I think Cresco is definitely a front runner. I have added this one to my short list. I'm gonna continue to watch them. Now, if we jump back to their chart, you can see here they are trading pretty close 
close to resistance. So about 1576, 1575 Canadian seems to be pretty good resistance for this company. So I'm going to continue to watch. I probably will buy on the Canadian exchange. And I think a good entry point would really be anywhere in that kind of $15.50 to $16 range. So that's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed and learned something about Cresco Labs. If you haven't already, please take a second to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the section below on what you think of my analysis and what you think of Cresco Labs. I'm always happy to take requests, and if there's any companies you'd like me to review, feel free to leave a note and I'll add them to my list. Now on a final note, have a great rest of your day, you guys.